Hey, everybody. Tom Richardson again. Um, I'm about to review Paranormal Activity 3, the latest in the Paranormal Activity franchise. Um, just saw it the day I filmed this, which was Sunday of its opening week, um, which I will probably post this on Monday, which is today. Um, so Paranormal Activity 3, guys. Uh, I really like this movie. And what I really like the best about this film, and based on what I read online after I saw the film, it sounds like a lot of people really like that last 15-minute ending. Or if you don't like the ending, you did. It, you almost felt it's one of those these endings where you either love it or you felt cheated, or not even so much cheated. It just felt incomplete. Um, but anyway, Paranormal Activity three is actually a prequel to a prequel. Paranormal Activity two was the prequel. And this is the prequel to the prequel. So this takes place when Katie and Christy are little girls. And it starts out during one of their birthdays. And they're very young. It takes place in 1988 where they're, where they're still young. And this is pretty much their first encounter with a ghost ever. And um, it turns out the mother's boyfriend, I don't think they're married. Um, I think they had a different father, but... The mother's boyfriend is dating a guy who is a videographer or like a videotape man guy for weddings. And he he hears about this uh, imaginary friend called Toby that Christy has. And due to some unusual sounds that are going on in the house um, while he's practicing for this event that's coming up for him, Early in the film, he decides why not tape certain rooms in the house to kind of figure out what that unusual sound is during the nighttime and to kind of learn more about this Toby guy as time goes on. Um, so this kind of sets up how Paranormal Activity 1 and 2 start, the whole setting up cameras and rooms and studying um, what exactly happens in these rooms at night and what is exactly these sounds that are what what are these unusual sounds um so they set one up in the girls room they set one up in their bedroom and they set one up downstairs and it's set up like a fan so it's always going like this all day long and apparently because it takes place in the 80s he has to change the tapes every six hours because the tapes can't hold more than six hours of footage um and i don't know if that was the case in the first two films pretty sure it wasn't because it's modern day and those ones um so he has to change the tapes every six hours um but he's uh, as time goes on kind of like the first two films as the film progresses the ghost gets worse and worse because they're paying more attention to it like i explained in my other video for the first two films um throughout the, the video the movie um christy is always talking to toby on the side of the corner so let's say i'm christy She's talking to Toby like this. So Toby's hiding somewhere over here while the tape, the camera's right here, and she's talking talking to him who's Toby who's over here. And she has this small little cave in her room, and Toby seems to like to hide there throughout the film. And I'm not going to explain too much more of, of that because there's a lot of important scenes that happen that involve that small little room there. Um... But the situation gets worse and worse, and it gets to the point where they have to move out of the house. That's just how bad the situation gets. And um, and don't worry, guys, if you've seen this film, I'm not going to get too far, but I just want everybody to know um, just how bad this ghost got. Um, so they decide to move in with the grandmother. And this is where the film, I think, has a very interesting turn. Um, so they're there for the night, and this time they only have one camera and one room. And this is where the film has a the very interesting 15-minute conclusion, which is either you love it or you hate it, or you felt incomplete. Or, yeah, the, the story felt incomplete for some people. Um, all I'm going to say, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but it feels like a giant bad dream in the Blair Witch Project. That's my best explanation I can give about the ending of Paranormal Activity 3 without ruining it. It feels like a bad dream. And Blair Witch Project. That's exactly what it feels like. 
Um, and you actually get to see the, you know, how Blair Witch Project, you can see the witch, but this time you get to see it. Um, so a lot of witchcraft near the end of the film, which is kind of cool and scary at the same time. So Paranormal Activity 3, guys, I loved the writing of this film. Uh, that's my biggest compliment of Paranormal 3 is the writing. I thought this film had much better writing than the second installment. I thought this film, um, it was very close to beating the writing of the first film, in fact. Um, Paranormal 1 is still my favorite Paranormal Activity film due to how scary it was, due to how clever it was, how original it was. Um, Paranormal 2 is probably my least favorite Paranormal film now. Um, it still managed to be scary. I thought it was scarier than this installment, but I thought the writing of Paranormal 2 was the weakest. Um, some of my co complaints of Paranormal 2 was the writing just... It was either the family they focused on, Christie's family's uh, new side of the family that I didn't like, or there was just so many over-the-top stuff that happened in the second one. I just couldn't get into it the way I could get into the first and third one. Um, I still liked Paranormal 2, very scary, a lot of scary things happened in that one, including the basement scene that was famous for that movie. Um, a lot of unanswered questions, and unfortunately Paranormal 3 did not answer the ending of the second movie, so I was a little disappointed about that. I'm not going to tell you what that is, but for those who've seen Paranormal 2, unfortunately Paranormal 3 does not answer that unsolved ending of the second film either. Um, so either these films are leaving them open so you can interpret it any way you want, or this is just Hollywood's, Hollywood's strategy of continuing to make these films. Um, so Paranormal 3, guys, I really liked it. 8 out of 10 for me. Um, for those who are curious, uh, I give 8.5 out of 10 for the first Paranormal film, and I give on, on, only an 8 going on to a 7.5 for Paranormal 2. Um so Paranormal 3 is probably my second favorite paranormal film. Loved the whole witchcraft deal. Loved the whole bad dream, witchcraft, Blair Witch Project feeling to the end. Um, so very good, guys. Check it out. It's a great Halloween film if you want a good scare or just a good cleverly written ghost story. Um, I give Paranormal 3 a huge thumbs up. It's a great installment that makes this franchise even better than it was before I saw Paranormal 3.